OK, so for question 10, year 11, we are told that Bill out invests £4,000 in his savings account for three years. And then we are told it is being like the interest is being paid compoundly. And so because of that, what that means is it's going to get paid 1.5% of 4,000. And after that, it's going to get paid a new percentage of that amount and then a new percentage of this amount. So to start with, what I would do is I would work out how much money there is in the account at the end of the first year. And so to do that, I'm going to do the original amount of money, 4,000, times by my multiplier, which I'll work out in just a second. And that's going to be the power of one. And it's the power of one because I'm just looking for the first year. Now, to work out my multiplier, what I would do, because it's increasing, I would do 100% plus 1.5%, which is 101.5%. And then I would convert that into a decimal by dividing by 100, which gives 1.015. 1 1.015 and then I'm going to put exactly that into my calculator and when I put that into my calculator I get an answer of £4,060. Now let's take the next bit so then it gets paid x percent for the next two years so to work out how much money there is in the account at the end of the third year we would do 4060 times by my multiplier, which I don't know yet. And this time though, I know what the I know what the amount is at the end in the account at the end of the three years is four one four one point six one. And so this is basically an equation that needs solving. So we've got four thousand and sixty times something, which I'm going to call x, and that gives me that. But it's not just x, is it? It's x squared. And the reason it's x squared is because we are thinking about how much money there is over two years. So the second year and the third year means two years in total. So then to figure out our multiplier squared, we need to do 4,141.61 divided by 1,060, which gives us an answer of this. 1.02010985. So if that's what x squared is, we would then want to square root both sides. So when we square root both sides, we get x would be, and let's square root that, 1.01000048. And then just being really, really careful. So if you think about these steps up here that I did earlier, I divided by 100 and then I added 100%. So I'm going to work backwards. So I'm going to times this by 100 now. And then I'm going to take away 100. So when I times that by 100 and take away 100, I get a final percentage of X being 1%. And that's what X is. The rate of interest in the second and third year is 1%. For question B, so for question B, we are told the coat of a jacket decreases by 12% in a sale to £140. Work out the cost of the jacket before the sale. So I'm just going to draw a quick little diagram to help us visualise what's going on, to help us visualise what maths we should be doing. So this block here represents 100% of the coat. So this is the cost of the coat before the sale. And then the coat gets put on sale and it gets decreased by 12.5%. So this bit here can be my 12.5%. And so this remaining percentage must be 100% take away 12.5%, which is 87.5%. And now I also know that this 87.5% is the same as £140. And so now I've got all of that, 87.5% is the same as £140. I want to get back to 100%, so I want to get back to the starting cost. What I would recommend that we do here then is find 1% first. So to get from 87.5% to 1%, I'm dividing by 87.5, and after that I'm going to times by 100. 
So over here, I'm going to do 140 divided by 87.5, which gives me 1.6 or £1.60. And after that, we're going to times by 100, which gives £160. And that was the cost of the coat before the sale. Just thinking, that makes sense, right? The cost was 160 gets put in the sale and ends up at 140